Hi, good to have you here. I'm Jessica. In this video, we are going to look at management versus leadership and the changes between the two. Many people really use the term leadership and the term management interchangeably, but they're really quite different. The term management implies that somebody has a position or a title, and through this position or title, they have power. They have power to make decisions, they have power to direct other people, their subordinates, et cetera. Leadership, on the other hand, does not require a specific title. It's about anyone just arising or emerging as a leader can be a leader. It does just require that people look up to that person for one reason or another. Think about the last group project that you worked for in school maybe, or at work. It's likely that somebody took on the leadership role. They started arranging uh, meetings, checking in with people's calendars, uh, emailing people, communicating, taking initiative. This, person's probably, this person did probably not have a formal title, but they led the group anyway. That would be an example of leadership. So a question for you. Do you think leadership comes naturally to some people and not to others? Obviously, to be successful at our jobs, we must know leadership skills and we need to show them to other people. That's why we're here, right? These leadership skills, a lot of the time, come from our emotional intelligence skills. And we know emotional intelligence covers both the self and the other person. So for yourself, that's going to be self-awareness and self-management. And for other people, that's social awareness and relationship management. All these emotional intelligence skills are needed to be successful as a leader. For instance, if you are the informal leader for your group project, but you feel frustrated, maybe they are not responding as quickly as you would want them to. Maybe they're turning in um, work that is subpar. As a leader, you must have the ability to pay attention to your emotions and manage them, right? So we are not taking out our frustration on our team members when we see them. But getting our team to work better together really requires social awareness skills. Social awareness is the ability to understand how the actions of one person, one team member, affects the other person or another team member. We also need to pay attention to the relationship management. How do we manage when the group doesn't get along, when there's conflict? How do you maintain good relationships with our team, even if we don't like them all, right? We still have to be able to work together. As you can see, leadership takes into account all of these EQ skills that we have been discussing in this book. So how do then leaders come into their roles? Leaders take on roles because they are either appointed, they are elected democratically, or they emerge. And group members play an important role in this process. An appointed leader this is a person who is designated by an authority to serve in a leadership capacity. Doesn't matter what the group wants or what the group thinks, they have been appointed. So the employees might serve um, under this leader, but they might not be happy about it. As they get to know each other and they communicate more freely, an appointed leader who lacks the endorsement from the group might really experience challenges because people are challenging their authority. Hopefully they are serving as the leader and accomplishing all of the designated tasks. Uh, but if the group doesn't accept them, it can really be a challenge. A democratic leader is a person that has been elected by the group to serve as the leader. These type of leaders tend to involve the employees or the group members into decision-making processes. And they really wanna make sure that the there is group ownership of the decisions and the actions so that everybody feels better about what is going on. When you have a democratic leader, you typically have open and free conversations. They uh, represent the process 
and democratic leader wants to acknowledge the diversity of opinion so everybody can have voice and be heard. However, these type of leaders might also face serious challenges. And this typically happens when individual group members or constituents feel neglected or ignore. And if that happens, they may assert that the democratic leader do not represent their interest. Finally, we have the emergent leader. And this is the one we talked about on the prior slide with the group work at school. This is an individual who grows into that leadership role, probably because there was a void. And so it happens out of necessity. This appointed leader might not even know what they're doing or know very little about the topic or the content. And sometimes the group members tend to look to, towards the more senior member that has the most experience for leadership. So not necessarily the oldest person by age, but the one with the most leadership experience. If an appointed or a democratic leader, one or two on this slide, fail to bring the group together or does not represent the whole group, we are often gonna see subgroups or click clicks happening. And each of these cliques or subgroups typically come with their own informal leaders and they're serving as spokespeople for those smaller groups. Thomas Harris and John Sherblom, they specifically noted three leadership styles that are more typical for the modern business today. The organizations we see today that reflect our current economy. So these are the three modern types of leaders. The first one is the leader as technician. This typically happens when we have skills that other people don't. So for instance, if you know how to fix the copy machine at the office, your leadership and the and ability in that domain is gonna get priced by people, right? They're gonna look after you when they need you for that help. So you can have some sought after skills. You might help other people loading the paper, changing the toner, and you might not get paid for this, but people are looking to you to help them with that. So in that sense, you are a group leader uh, with this technical skill. Pay attention though, when we talk about technical skills, it's not the same as technology. A lot of people confuse them. Technology is one skill. Other skills can be something like budgeting or facilities management or event planning. Those are also technical skills. It means that you have skills in that specific domain. So technical skills are not necessarily technology. All the technology is a type of technical skill. Secondly, we have the leader as conductor. This is a person that has a central role of bringing people together for a goal that's common to all of us. In a very familiar analogy, you have a conductor who would be leading their orchestra. And this person, the conductor, would integrate all of the specialized skills and sounds of the various musicians of that musical group. In the same way, we can say that the leader who conducts, they set a vision, they might be creating benchmarks, and they might be collaborating with the group as they interpret a set script or plans or processes. Whether this group is a larger group or just a dyad of two people doesn't matter. The leader as a conductor would keep the same time and tempo of the group being one of the group. Thirdly, we have coaches. And today we often talk about coaches in business related environments. Business books talks about coaches all the time. You wanna be a coach as a leader. And that's with good reason, right? A leader as a coach combines many of the talents and skills that we see in the leadership domain. So they would serve as a teacher, they would serve as a motivator, maybe keeper of goals of the group, and sometimes even be autocratic. They can appoint, give directions, maybe and not take input from the group. Sometimes they're gonna stand on the sidelines while the employees that have been trained to do the work, do the work. Um, the coach might look out for the group and defend it against bad calls and may mo motivate players with words of encouragement. So a coach really just steps in where they ne are needed and they take on a lot of different leadership type roles. So we just talked about the coach, right? And we can also recognize that some of the behaviors of coaches um, that are specific to coaching. And so we have Thomas Peters and Nancy Austin who identified five such important coach traits 
that have been found to positively influence groups. The first one would be orientation and education, socializing people into the group and teaching them what they need to know. We want to nurture and encourage. We want to praise people and we want to show them that we care about them. We also want to assess how are they doing with their performance. And if something is not going the way it should be, there needs to be correction. Can we give them training? How can they learn the skill? How can we help them execute on it better? We always need to listen to people. If they have concerns, they have challenges, we are there with an open door, with an open ear, and we listen and we counsel as much as we can or is needed. And you want to check in with the person. Do they want counseling? Do they want problem solving? Or do they just want you to listen? We also want to establish group emphasis. We are here as a group. We're working together. And the group supersedes the individual. So you might ask, all this leadership and management stuff, why and how does it matter? Why does it matter for me? Well, as we've talked about, you don't need a fancy title to be a leader, right? To be an effective, successful leader, you just need to show the leadership traits. You need to exhibit these emotional intelligence skills. Good leaders, they know themselves well. They know their strengths. They know their weaknesses. They know what they can do and where they need support. Good leaders also know their feelings. They pay attention to their feelings from moment to moment, but they also know how to manage them. They have learned how to manage them so they don't just blow up and get angry in a meeting. They're not, they don't show their frustration. They don't cry openly. They just manage their emotions. Of course, we can all show emotions. It's not a bad thing, but we don't want to be erratic about it. Good leaders also have many similar qualities such as empathy, ethics, understanding, and patience. All of these skills are EQ skills, right? We talk about the social awareness. We talk about relationship management. So social awareness is super crucial. You want to make sure that you pay attention to other people, reading and interpreting the social cues and their body language so that we can resolve conflict, set goals, understand the perspectives of everyone else in the room, and we want to have a positive attitude while we do that. So a leader is really somebody who people want to be around. If you, people want to be around you, you're a leader. It doesn't matter if you have that title uh, that makes you a manager. And we also need to really work on our relationship management, as we just said earlier. We handle relationships with other people well, and so that we can maintain a positive group cohesion and environment, even though we might be having conflict from time to time, which is normal, as long as we focus it on the task at hand. Remember, showing your emotional intelligence skills in the workplace, it's not just to make yourself happier and feel good about it, which it will, but it will also show your boss that you're ready to move up in the organization. And so having EQ skills and paying attention to them and deploying them in your day-to-day -day work ought to result in higher salaries, promotions, and excelling in your chosen career. So with that, think of a leader that you admire and respect. How did this individual become a leader? For instance, were they appointed? Was there a democratic selection or election? or did they emerge? And how would you characterize this leadership style? Would they be autocratic, laissez-faire, technician, or coach? So in summary then, leadership is a bit different than management in that management, as we talked about, has a title and that comes from the organizational structure. Leadership and leadership development processes occur without a title. Of course, a manager can be a leader, but a lot of the times the leaders that we see, they don't have a title. Leaders can be appointed, elected, or emerge. We also have three types of leadership. We have the technician, we have the conductor, and we have the coach. Many leaders will use a variety of approaches depending on the situation. 
So with that, I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Bye for now.